Well, hello and welcome back to the garden. I'm just at the end of the kitchen garden here and there is a job here that I want to do now while I still have the chance. And then when it's raining or the showers are coming in, I can catch up with a bit of seed sowing. Now some gardening jobs have a very short window of opportunity to get them done and it's especially true when you're dealing with bare root plants so basically plants that are already in the ground but then they end up being dug up and then replanted and the risks are even greater when you're dealing with a big shrub or a tree like I am today so you are going to try to get your timing really correct and accurate for this as when you buy a plant from a garden centre or nursery and that's already potted up that's easy because you can plant that anytime anytime the ground is not frozen for you can plant that but when you physically are taking a plant out of the ground without the soil attached to its roots. You only have one time in autumn at the end of growing season and before the frost set in, before the ground freezes to get the plant up and uh, move it. And the second time is at the end of winter before the spring starts. So before the plant actually needs all the nutrients uh, through its roots and starts growing again. Um, just before that, you also have the opportune time to actually get it dug up. So this is the apple tree I want to move today. And it is a relatively young tree. It hasn't been planted here that long. I want to say I probably planted about two years ago. And I'd say it was two to three year old um, young tree at that time. So, so it is size wise only slightly smaller than the two existing trees in the kitchen garden already. But I was able to get a apple off it last summer and it was a delicious um, a tasting apple. It is a dessert variety and it's not a good keeper. So it, it's perfect for eating fresh off the tree and it's uh, quite early maturing. So end of summer type of a, um, tree. tree. <laughs> end of summer type of an apple variety um, or early um, autumn and the thing is that it did have more apples on it but the crows got to them and that is a continuous issue we're having here at this part of the site um, in the orchard where the wildlife just gets to the produce way earlier than we do. And because I've been able to actually taste this variety I know how nice it is and it's definitely a tree we want to keep or keep harvesting off of. Um, that's why I was thinking that I'd rather take it into the kitchen garden because at least there, the crows are leaving the fruit alone. They're not bold enough to come right behind our windows and start eating off the tree as they do here in the orchard. And same goes for my gardening buddy. He is known for um, jumping up at the trees and pulling apples down off them. As again, he hasn't gotten into the habit of it in the kitchen garden. So that's what I'll do today. Very end of February, just before the spring is about to really start, we'll get this tree up and replant it in the kitchen garden. Now I'm digging just about a foot away from the trunk. So that's about 30 centimeters. Because there'll be a lot of soil that's going to fall off this now anyway off the root ball as I'll be pulling it out. The only way I can sort of quite easily dig around here at the moment is because obviously at the time when I would have planted it, I would have added a lot of nice compost into this area. So it's not all just the native clay and stone soil in here. I did the very hard work at the time when I originally was planting the tree.
The flock of starlings on my background seem to be very happy with their landing spot at the moment. They're very chatty. Now the space I have here, which I thought what I would use for this um, apple tree guild would be just this section of the planter here. And it's about um, a meter, meter 10 by meter, meter 20 or so. So it's about square. So three foot eight, more than three and a half foot, but less than four foot, <laughs> say it like that. I'm just going to put it right in the middle of it. And I'll put a bit of fertilizer into it as well. Well, the seaweed fertilizer. And just a bit of poultry manure as well. And I'll mix that into the bottom of the soil. And the trees planted. I didn't dig a very big hole for it initially. I left it a little bit proud from the existing soil surface, but it was because I knew I wanted to give this area a thicker mulch anyway. So that's in now. I have two separate stakes in it as well. The first one I put exactly to where the prevailing wind is coming from, and then obviously the tie around it as well but then I also have the second one opposite to the direction of the first one and there the tie actually one tie wasn't enough I had to combine two long ties to get um, enough of a distance between the tree and the stake and to make sure the tree is in a very sturdy situation regardless from which direction the wind is going to blow from but the first stake into the prevailing wind and the second one right to the opposite and then two ties pulling two opposite directions. well actually they're not really pulling anything but if the tree will be shaking around it will um, sturdy and steady up really well. And I suppose there's one thing to bear in mind when you're combining apple trees like that or when you're combining pear trees or you're combining cherry trees or plum trees is that to take a note of what pollinator group they belong to so that there is enough of cross-pollination between um, the trees themselves and you'll have a better chance of a good harvest. But it's really just a reference to what time of the year or how early certain trees are flowering so when the flowers are actually out there to be pollinated. Discovery apple then that I have is actually one of the parents for this beauty of bath so it's a heritage variety and a dessert apple so really looking forward to getting some fresh apples from this tree now as well. I hope the rain is going to hold up while I'm talking to you because the next topic is actually really, really important. And it's all thanks to a video clip that Tanya from Lovely Greens did. Now I can't find it, so I'm thinking that it must have been on Instagram stories, but she has done an article about it. And once I was reading more about there, there is more information about this particular topic. It's all to do with an invasive species that is very prevalent in UK, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, and actually even in Southern Ireland, because I have seen them in here, in our garden. Now she was specifically speaking about New Zealand flatworm, uh, but there are actually more than just one of invasive uh, species that are non-native, and um, they are Australian flatworm and New Zealand flatworm. And even though those two aren't as invasive at the moment on the mainland of Europe, as the mainland of Europe has an Obama 
um, flatworm apparently. And the main reason why they're being invasive and why we should actually really start paying attention to them is because first of all obviously they're introduced species, they are not native, but they are detrimental to our earthworm population. So obviously every gardener would know that earthworms are your best of friends, or at least one of the best of friends in the garden, but definitely your best of friends in the soil. And those flatworms actually feed on earthworms. But she was even saying that on her allotment, the earthworm population had been totally decimated. So I'm sure that nobody wants to see that in our own gardens. So knowing all that now, I'm definitely going to be 100% more vigilant. So anytime I'll be on the lookout for slugs, I'll also will be on the lookout for those flatworms. And luckily they're quite easy to sort of spot or trying to at least reduce the population if it's already in the garden. And it would be to remember that they seem to be hanging around in those same areas as spots, no, as slugs do, and anywhere around the pots and under the pots. So under cover where slugs would be hiding, under pots, that's where you look out for them. I'll show you now how they look like and then obviously go ahead and do your own research on those as well and keep an eye out for them. So this plastic sheet mulch is brilliant for a lot of things. Obviously one thing is killing the grass or um, suppressing any kind of weed growth. And then also this plastic is great for testing an area of your garden to see if you have any of these flatworms in your garden. And obviously, <laughs> I, at the moment I'm just picking off slugs still. I haven't come across that many of them, but at least now I know what I'm dealing with. You see now there? You see how flat it is? Now this is quite a pale colored one. I'll put it in there and we'll talk about them more, but more slugs. Now the easiest way I find to spot them is that there's usually like a trail of slime, a bit like a slug slime, but it is in a very concentrated area and they usually just sit in the middle of it. So this is one of them. Now it's curled up at the moment. What are you there? It's wet, I know. Yeah, this is a big spot for slugs as well. So I don't, I've never seen them in this planter before, but I know there's slugs here. So I still have to pick up all the slugs. I took the cover off this bed because I do actually want to harvest carrots. I can see they're starting to re-sprout, but also um, I have still some parsnips in this bed, which I had forgotten about because obviously the frost had killed the foliage. <laughs> hey, oh, they're nice parsnips. I put this tarpaulin onto the bed just to keep the frost off it, really. And yeah. Oh, that's a nice one now. Yeah. So I still have more carrots sort of in the middle area here after even today's harvest and obviously parsnips 
another couple here and actually another couple at the very top as well. So there's at least one more decent harvest to come out of this planter. Cannot speak more highly of this guy. And while there's a break between the showers, I better harvest a bucket of potatoes as well because we do need potatoes for tonight. Yes, Bubba. Yes, Bud. Was I talking about you? No, I was talking about the potatoes that are actually inside this pot, okay? Yes, okay. I'll, I'll throw it for you now in a second, all right? Um, and this is my very last pot. Uh, that's number four, and that should be this re. Oh, crater. Yes, the very last pot of it. But we, we planted new ones already. We did. Yeah, we did. Yes, you're very mucky looking. Come on, I'll, I'll throw it for you now in a second, all right? Okay. Um, because I did harvest the number five uh, bucket last, during, during the week. And that was the Keris Pink variety, which had a very poor outcome. So for this year, I'm not uh, growing Keris Pink anymore. But I do want to keep seed potatoes from this because our garden centre didn't have any Desiree um, seed potatoes this year. So uh, if I could um, keep my own seed, I definitely want to grow Desiree again this year because this was one of the best uh, performing potatoes over the last couple of years. If you give me the ball, I'll throw it for you, Baba. Yeah, come on. Come on, sir. I'll, I'll throw it. Just give it to me there. Now, it isn't a huge quantity, but knowing that it was our family's favourite uh, potato of the main crop, so it's the Charlotte. We don't even talk about Charlotte. Everybody loves Charlotte. And because I couldn't get any seed potatoes, I'm definitely going to save a couple of them because I do want to. Uh, grow this again. There's a couple of really nice big tubers in it and overall this potato is able to give a good return on um, when you're growing it organically. So um, definitely a couple of potatoes for myself uh, to eat and then maybe four or five, six uh, for um, seeds. I've come into the greenhouse for a bit of shelter because uh, it's a bit nippy out there now but I have the tub with all the slugs and the flatworms that I could see that I gathered up with me and if you're any bit squeamish and you can't stand the look of these things then just look away for the next 10, 15, 20 seconds or so uh, because I do want to show you what they look like because it is important. If you're any bit worried about the soil life in your garden, then you do want to know about these invasive species. But if you see down here, see this more reddish colored. This is not an earthworm. This is a, not a flatworm. If you see it there, it's just covered with a bit more soil. And the belly is pale, but the top is much darker. And then there's another really pale version there. And this is the guy now trying to reach upwards again that I had to put back into the top. So this brown colored one is what I assume is the New Zealand flatworm. And then this bright colored one I think it's the Australian flatworm because they're referred to as salmon pink in color. And I don't know what that light colored one is. I don't know if that's a native or non-native or is this an Australian as well. It just happens to be a bit paler in color. But this one, it's I assume it's definitely Australian one. Now they're supposed to be smaller as well than this guy, which is the New Zealand one. And one second now, I have a few escapees of slugs, which we definitely don't want in here. Come out. Ah. Okay, one. It's the cleanest system there available.
But let's talk about something much more pleasant. And the other day I was in our local garden center and it was the first time now this year I got really giddy because and excited because they have done a huge revamp to their garden center and especially the plants area outside there is all the plants are so perfectly sectioned there's new signage you can clearly see but it was so properly stocked there was so much choice so looking around there now and obviously knowing the spring is just around the corner i really did get excited and obviously this is all ornamental stuff so i was thinking mostly about my cottage garden area my rose garden and i said oh my god i really have to put my thinking thinking cap on now and start really figuring out what plants do i want in the garden because i've been putting it off and i've been mainly maybe focusing in my mind about the kitchen garden side of it and they did also have a nice selection of dahlia tubers and I've never grown dahlias before, so I might have just caved and got myself two different varieties, uh, one of each, just one of each. I'll start with that because I didn't really want to have more plants in the garden that I really have to mind over winter, but I, um, I did cave and I got those too. So I do have dahlias now as well to grow this year in the garden. And as I have time left today, I'm also going to catch up with my seed sowing. So I'm definitely going to plant sweet peas today, uh, broad beans, uh, some more flowers and some more vegetables. But as I was planting the apple tree today and overall the topic about that area is going to be fruit tree guild. And if you haven't seen that video by me, just have a look at that. And also, even though we're at the very end of February, first half of March, the same jobs as they were for the month of February can apply still. So have a look at that video as well. And otherwise, uh, we'll just see you next time.